Well, we are <coughs> breathless in, and we're three days from Christmas and it's breathless on the EMBN show this week. Me and Richard have just had a discussion <laughs> of form over function yes. and uh, mountain bike helmets. We have actually. But it applies to everything, doesn't it? It applies Agreed. to helmets, yeah. knee pads, shoes, glasses, and also bikes. And on today's EMBN <laughs> show, we're talking about affordable EMTBs. Mm, interesting. Uh, Rich, affordable EMTBs. Yep. Now, we've just come off the back of a oh, 10 minutes head rant. to head <laughs> about form and function. And some people might think that cheaper mountain bikes, e mountain bikes, <laughs> are going to be visually less attractive than the more expensive ones, possibly. Yeah, I believe that stigma can be attached to certainly a few. And I would say in some cases it is. It can be proven as well. Proven? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think there are some more budget things out there that are less looking than the slightly but more Rich, expensive But the thing is, right, you do not look at your bike when you're riding it. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You look at the handlebars. Steve. Don't Steve what? me. No, Stephen. <laughs> Go on. Of course you do. You have to like what you're 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 buying. You're you'd have to like what you're holding, right? When you're using it. Hundred percent. Yeah. If you think, oh god, I wish I'd bought the slightly more expensive but better looking one, then that's part of a mind game. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, think well, of how many times you've crashed and seen your bike going off. You think, oh, that's a good looking bike clattering down the hill. Uh, well, folks, feast your eyes on these beauties that Chris and Louis shot out in the Rock Deserve Festival back in October, mm. while me and Rich continue the conversation. Everyone in life has a budget that they live to. Some of us have more money, some of us have less. And unfortunately, e-bikes are expensive, so a lot of people are put off by the price. But there are some affordable e-bikes out there that offer great value and great performance too. But affordable e-bikes are definitely out there. Let's go see what we can find at The Rock. Now things kick off around 800 to 1,000 UK pounds when it comes to affordable e-mountain bikes. But these are often rear hub drive models or some of them are even front hub drive models, which are fine if you're just into cruising around basic off-road scenarios or on the tarmac to take the sting out of the hills. But the next on the list is gonna be that mid-drive bike. And as the name suggests, the motor is mounted in the middle of the bike. Now the advantages of this is a more balanced weight in the bike. You haven't got all that weight in the back wheel. It's right in the middle of the bike. Low down weight gives great handling and great characteristics. Now this is a great example of an affordable e-mountain bike. Now this costs 1,999 euros. This is the Rock Rider e-Explorer 520. Details on this is the motor, well that comes from Yamaha, it gives you 50 Newton meters of torque. You've got a 500 watt hour internal battery on this bike. We've got a budget suspension fork up front which is giving you 130 mil of travel. Rolling on 29 inch wheels which have some true off-road rubber on there. Got a hydraulic disc brakes on here, a nice comfy cockpit. Contact points are really good on this as well. Haven't got a dropper, but you can upgrade that later on. And the gearing as well, well that's coming from Microshift, you've got a clutch rear mech. Proper off-road ready hardtail for under 2,000 euros. Now, Leader Fox is a brand that you may not have heard of, but they do have some good bikes in their lineup. This bike is a budget 29-inch hardtail, internal battery on this. Uh, you've got a motor from Bafang, quality Shimano running gear on this bike. Now, if you fancy a full suspension bike, then we have the Leader Fox Akron. Now, this is a 29-inch wheel bike, full suspension at great value too. It's a nice tan wall tires on there, off-road capable componentry, Again, uh, nice hydraulic disc brakes, but full suspension. But if you want to go something a little bit more different again, then we have this fat bike called the Leader Fox Gragger. Now this has 26 inch wheels, but it's a fat bike. Now this has the Bafang motor on there, 90 newton meters of torque. This thing looks a load of fun. And I reckon that thing with some low tire pressures would be capable of climbing some vertical walls. And the great thing about these bikes is that you're not gonna have to spend over 3,000 euros. So you can go 29 inch hardtail, 29 inch full suspension, or get that full fat, fatty powered EV bike. That looks a load of fun. So what do you get when you spend that little bit more cash? Well, this is the Canyon Grand Canyon On. Now this is a proper off-road style hardtail. Now the base model of this bike comes in at 2,899 pounds. This one we've got here is 3,500 pounds. But the difference between those budget bikes is the componentry that you're gonna get on these. Up front, we've got a decent Fox 34 fork. 
We've got strong 29 inch wheels on this bike, uh, proper Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, and the componentry as well. Uh, XT derailleur, wide range uh, ratio cassette on this bike, Shimano EP8 motor, and you've got an internal 540 watt hour battery on this bike, dropper seat post, it literally uh, ticks the bill for every single thing that you're gonna need when you're riding off-road compared to those cheaper mid-drive bikes that we looked at earlier on in the video. And affordable bikes doesn't necessarily just mean a hardtail bike. You get some full suspension bikes at affordable prices too. This is the Rock Rider E-Explorer 520S and it has some great components on it. And the best of all thing, this bike costs 2,500 euros. Got a Brose motor on this thing, 70 newton meters of torque. You've got an internal 500 watt hour battery, 140 mil travel coming from the rear of this bike, 150 mil travel fork up front. Componentry again from Microchip, you've got that clutch rear mech on there, 10 speed gearing, proper off-road wheels and tires on this bike, an amazing looking bike. The the whole affordable affordable e-bike things, yeah. it's a difficult one to pigeonhole or categorize. Tricky. I mean, what what is an affordable mountain bike? Not even... Oh, do you know what? I, it's, a, it's a tough one to say, isn't it? So... It's impossible. Because one person's affordable is another person's expensive. Yep. So I wouldn't like to even try to put a price on it, but it would appear these days, if you were to look at the market, an affordable mountain bike that is capable, can do everything, is probably the best part of a thousand pounds. That's a normal push bike. Yeah, at least. And that's a hardtail, right? Yeah, exactly. So full, I, full suspension mountain bike? Probably double it. It's got to be. Say. It's got to be two to three grand, right? To get. Well, I don't want to go as far as three, but you know, like I said, affordable is very different for different people. Now, in the e-bike world, now you take that affordable. We'll use the little air quote thing, bike, but you add a motor and whatnot onto it. Yeah. What are we talking at there, Steve? Well, the for a hardtail, let's go. Well, the hardtail, you know, like like Chris has been out at, at Rock Desert and the the hub drive ones. Yeah. You can get a really good decathlon like he saw there for like a grand, which is great. Wow. And, for, and, for, and as like the great thing about these type of bikes is they're great entries into into the mountain bike world. Okay. They will allow someone who's never explored the woods or the hills before to get out there. And you know, a thousand pound will, will enable you to do that. Now, when we say a thousand pound, I've not seen these bikes actually because uh, I was else, elsewhere. But what, are like we in, talking? Well, like, are we well, talking? Like in, in the Alps? And on, yeah, on I was a... doing mega rides. You couldn't. <laughs> Go on, carry on. <laughs> are we talking about? Okay, they're a great way to get into it. Yes, but they're if you start doing anything too serious on them, are they going to fall apart? Fairly they quickly? will. They will. Now, we... so really, they're not a. Vi they're almost not a viable entry in. I think you need to know what you're going to do on the bike. So I think if you're riding like, you know, forest roads yep. or smooth single track, they are perfect. But yeah, but yeah you, you know, you need to, you need to be you need to be reasonable about what you do with them. I bet yeah. I think the the main thing rich is that people buy like a thousand pound hardtail and they suddenly realize oh my god, we can For go sure. anywhere and I and you know, they wish they'd spent maybe like 500, 700 pound more to get that yeah. little bit more. Obviously that's not doable for a lot of people. But then looping back round to our form over function. Oh, I didn't realize you, go on. Yeah, I'm not letting that one drop, Steve. All right, go on. So well, they're not the prettiest, are they, some of them? What, some of the affordable bikes? Yes, they're not. Let's be honest. <sighs> oh, I really didn't think I was gonna go down this rabbit hole. Yep, we're going Well, it, it depends, it depends. We looked. If you're not very good at seeing. <laughs> what? Oh look, that's a lovely bike. <laughs> I didn't realise it was going to be brutalised on the show. Um, Hard facts. It, it depends, it depends. You're Let right. the audience decide. Oh gosh. Okay. What do you guys think of affordable e-mounted bikes? What is an affordable e-mounted bike? We have opened up a massive can of worms here, haven't we? The cans don't get much bigger. Look at that. Look at that, Steve. How there are no Please still be recording. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for your feedback on the EMBN videos. Now we get some mixed reaction sometimes. We also get some interesting comments, Rich. We this, do. I picked this one out last week. Okay. This is from Alberto Alvirio Mondilla Jr. Wow. Good morning, Merry Christmas. I wish I could have a mountain bike this coming Christmas. Thank you. I'm from Irene Miramonte, Lakban province of Quizon, Philippines. God bless us all. First up, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Alberto. Um, 
And that's a simple. That's that's all. That's all it needs, Rich. Yeah. It's a Merry Christmas. Yeah. And it is Merry Christmas. I hope you get a bike for Christmas, buddy. We do in the uh, Philippines. Next up, thank goodness, because I can pronounce this one, Patrick. Uh, one of the main reasons to keep buying an acoustic bike versus e-bike is riding access for e-mountain bikes. Still very limited here in the USA. A valid point because the states, massive, massive. The states is a bit hotter on this than what we are in the UK. The UK, we're. I what think, do you mean hotter? As in where you can ride. Access, right. as Patrick says. We go anywhere on our e-bikes, don't we? I know you flip and do, so you can't even deny it. Whereas the States, I feel like I feel like I've been machine gunned <laughs> in this week's EMBN show. <laughs> Wait till the anti-tank comes out. Right. Next one, Steve. But it's a good point. The thing is, yeah. uh, the thing is, Patrick. I think I think the other thing is not. It's not only land access. Is in all the different states, there's different rules in terms of the maximum speed, whether you need to helmet on your age. Well, it's it's like it is. You're talking can of worms earlier. This is an even bigger. Yeah, no, can of worms. I, I agree. I agree totally. I mean, obviously, we, we, this is the worm show. Yeah, <laughs> the worm, the worm feet. But we were riding some trails in Whistler this year, and e-bikes weren't allowed. Oh, on it just them. happened to be in Whistler this year. Yeah. Was that the week? Where were you? Was that the week before, or you after in the Alps? Not letting that one go, is he? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, it said no e-bikes on this trail, so okay, I, right. I think Patrick's got a valid point. But I tell you, I've seen a matey boy who's uh, who's a French dude riding e-bikes up to those big slabs in, in, in Squamish. Oh, uh, Remy? Only, he's Metallia? probably one of the most famous <laughs> man fuckers oh, <laughs> Remy Metallica? That's him, Metallica. That's him. That's it. Remy Metallica? Yeah. yeah. Metallica. Yeah. On some great, great rocks. God. Anyway, let's move on to God. Tom Montgomery. Yes. Now, uh, Rich, we had this uh, motor Perilla from Italy last week. Right. Um, and it says it was 21 kilos, but uh, like form and function, it didn't look 21 kilos. Mm. We're not saying it's not, obviously. Yeah. Um, but this Tom Montgomery says that they were known for their short push rod ration, ra ra racing, racing, engine. racing engines. Racing engines. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, Sean don't. Connery this week because I lost my hat to Martin Ashton. Sean Connery ain't dead. Don't do it, Steve. I'm gonna do it right now on camera. Don't do it. Watch this. Please Watch don't this. Do it, Steve. Watch this. Connery. Died 2020. Possibly the Eminem. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. If it is the real Slim Shady, do please stand up. If the battery is integrated, does it mean I cannot remove it at all and bring it into an aeroplane for different races? No, this is in relation to the new Orbear Rise, which uh, yes. is 15.9 kilos. It's an, that's another interesting question, isn't yeah. it? And I think you guys need to take that into account if you're thinking about doing e and bike races, because let me tell you, the EWS series oh. the E is absolutely amazing. We've done them, haven't we? And they are hard. Insane. But I, do you know what? I feel there's a whole video we could do there, Steve, whereby actually we look into traveling again, sort of some updated rules and regulations on traveling with bikes. About what you're saying then, Rich, is you want an excuse to go to yet another place. Yes. Steve, it's start bike time, and you've picked out some blinders, well, but I you noticed- have. Yeah, that's true, I have. <laughs> because there's some definite form and function going on here, because these are these are stunning. Yeah, off, I, I think this Trek, this Trek uh, Rail 9.7 uh, from oh, AA out in Wahoo in Hawaii, I'm absolutely loving that down tube. Yeah, that bronzy down tube does it. I think it's stunning. That's some nice fashion going on there. Louis, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, good, yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're older. In-house KOM man behind the camera there. What's that, Stevie? Beat you? Let's move on to, yeah, form of, <laughs> form of a function. Now, uh, Daniel's, Daniel's Turbo Levo S works. Yeah. Um, Very nice looking bike. EXT Shock, it's got the tan walls on there. It's got some custom graphics. Yeah, I mean. It's got a bit of, bit, a bit of blue on the chain ring. It's a great bike, it looks good. But there is a theme, obviously, and these are very expensive bicycles. But we'll, you know. We'll, well, yeah, we're, 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 not, we're, not, we're not going to gloss over anything. But I tell you what, coming back to what you mentioned a minute ago about um, the Metallica guy who lives in Remy Whistler. Ma Remy Metallica, yeah. Remy Metallica. So this is Whistler. I don't know it how is. we got on the subject of Remy Metallica and Whistler. Because you were talking about someone going up big steep rock faces or something. Was I? Well, look, this is, this is Paul on yep. a big steep rock in Green Lake on the yeah, sky to the sea. Sky. Um, very but nice. it's the bike, Rich. It's the bike, and I Beautiful. think I think the graphics on this bike. I think it's uh, you know goes along with. I think, guys, if you've got any, if you've got any, if you've got an e-bike which you've done some special things to, didn't come out very well, did it? 
<laughs> hey, look, we all love e-bikes around here. Some more than others. Um, if you've done something special to your e-bike... Keep going, Steve, you're nailing this. If you've done something to your special e-bike, uh, send in the picture and uh, we'd like to see it and, and, <laughs> and chat about it. So, folks, we haven't seen climb of the week for a few weeks, and uh, this is a particularly stunning climb, but it's a down and an up bridge. Oh, I like it. On a staircase. Now, do you, do you like a bit of climbing, dear? I do. Do you know what? That is my favourite thing to do on an e-bike, because I feel they open up climbs I can't do on my standard bike, so I like to try and find like the real techie climbs and get up them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do like a good e-bike climb. You mentioned, you mentioned one, Jacob's Ladder, what, in the Peak District? No. There's another one. There's another one, yeah. Jacob's Ladder at Cheddar Gorge. But it's all steps. It, this reminded me of it because it's just all oh, steps. Hold on, it's a manufactured step climb. Yeah. Right. But it's... Tune in, Richard Richard Payne, Jacob's Ladder, Cheddar Gorge. Coming but up. look, this isn't Richard Payne. This no. is... Um, this is Simon on his Focus Jam 2. And ironically, in, the in the, one of the flattest places in the world. Yeah. That Apparently, that is the largest step set in the Netherlands. Are you actually joking? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> it wouldn't but be. It's pretty big, isn't it? It is pretty big. And obviously, uh, Simon's put, some, put a lot of effort into this yeah. climb. I like it, though. I, I like think it. that stuff like that is real cool. It, it, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to do that on a normal bike. Not you specifically, but many people. <laughs> the machine gunning, more <laughs> shots fired. Yeah, folks. Uh, and Simon, thanks so much for yeah. sending uh, your climb yeah, keep them coming. from Holland. <laughs> This is where in the world? This is where in the world, Rich. Oh, wow. nice. It's, and where in the world are we, Steve? We are where in the world? We're in Switzerland with Alastair. Now, this is an interesting story. Alastair was over from Canada, went to Garda with his wife, broke his foot on oh, Monte Baldo, unsurprisingly. I mean, Garda mm. is one of the hardest, nastiest places to ride in the it's world. Gnarly, yeah. Um, but spent some time. He managed to get his uh, foot into a boot and ride his turbo levo. Up, um, this, up, up the Walchwil in Switzerland, or, or is this on the Zugersee? But anyway, I think some of the temperature inversions in some of these images, Rich, are really stunning. Unbelievable. I mean, there's a little video attached as well and everything. Yeah. I mean, for a where in the world, it is heck it's, of a place. This, is, a, this a, is up there, isn't it? Heck of a place. It is up there. Up there in the hills. <laughs> He's literally up in the clouds. No, honestly, but you know, some very good pictures taken. Yeah. Again, a great example of where his e-bike is has taken him, is specialised there. Well, with a broken foot. Yeah, wouldn't and be I, on a normal bike, would you? Probably not, you'd have been in your car. But uh, Alistair, thanks so much for your images. Uh, really amazing, thank you. Three days to Christmas, Richard. That's yeah. uh, so close. And it's not too late to go shopping, as you can see. I Richard think. Payne has been shopping. Finally. He's got a plum. Is it a plum colour or is it grape? I think it's grape, that colour. It's purple. It's purple, isn't it? It's not great bob plum, but it's a it's nice purple. it's a nice combo with your hat there. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, folks, there's some bundles on the NBN shop. There's hoodies, which are great for uh, these cold winter months in Northern Hemisphere. Obviously, if you're down in Australia or Tasmania, like we seem to be seeing in the bike vault images, then obviously there's lots of T-shirts. Yeah, but head on over now. The shop is linked in the description down below, and you can grab yourself a bargain. Right, it's Bike Vault time. Now, last week we did ask for a lightweight e-bike theme and you guys and girls delivered the goods. So to kick things off, Steve, we've got Steve's. We've got Steve, Trek Fuel EX 9.7. What a fantastic bike. Rich, you need to ride one of those. I have. And it's a very good bike. Yeah, loved it. I rode it on this. Very nice, yeah, I actually really liked it. Very quiet, like that. Uh, next up is not so lightweight. Uh, this pumpkin? is a pumpkin and also a track rail with some Bags on the back. You're a big bag. Everything. You're a big bag man, aren't you, Rich? Uh, <laughs> I'm a big pumpkin guy. Look at the size of that. You pumpkin? Yeah, it's a big pumpkin. It's massive. You can, I think. It's, come on, it's a nice. It's a super nice shot, isn't it? Oh, we didn't rate the first one. Hang we on. We did. I whistled at it. Oh, you, sorry. Get with it. Yeah. Yeah. And right. the next one's the next one's a wolf whistle too. <whistles> Although allegedly, Rich says you can't do it. And I think the third one, just in uh, Cube Sarah Hybrid in Kum Khan. Yes. Kum Khan, isn't it? Oh. Blast in the past, eh? I remember one of my like first national downhills, eh? But anyway, not a lightweight e bike, though. How are these sneaking in, Steve? What have we got next? We've got a moustache. Uh, oh, thank you. This is a Stral Mountain near Cannes, south of France. Oh, I'd like to be there. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? What's wrong with being here with me? 
It's nice too. Oh, super nice. <laughs> You can't go whistling at me like that, Richard, or I'll be on the phone to Gillian. <laughs> Not again. Um, Estrella Mountain Park is the location of the next shot here on Ron and Giant Trance, a no. starry night colour. Right. Very nice. <laughs> and then a Marin. And the Marin is in this strange place. Oh, it's at Trudy and Emma's in Peaslake. Oh, hi, Trudy. Uh, yeah, very nice. Oh, Trudy! Good old Trudy. Yes. Super nice. Am I missing you? Yes, you have. I'll explain later. <laughs> Not to you, Trudy. Trudy but... on the bike. I'm so oh, confused come right on. now. And anyway, this is our next right, back lightweight. Back to our lightweight things. We got a bit waylaid light. there, we didn't did. we? We did. Not the Trudy. Um, the Orbea... Why did I have to say that? Because you're odd. This is the Orbea Rise M20, and it's been nicely upgraded in Vancouver Island, BC, and that's a definite wolf whistle if ever. Cowichan Bay. Have you been there? No. It's the Orbea Rise M20. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? So Watch loads on. of upgrade. XTR, Chromag, Kushkor, Pirelli's on there. Very mm. nice. That's a wolf whistle and a half from me. <laughs> uh, a shot with a dog. Simon Marita, you on 60. That's a nice shot. Yeah. Uh, like Kieran, Track Rail, Dior 2022, out in Plandegla. That's a nice shot. Uh, and the next one is uh, Paddy's Crafty. In Very Gisborne correct. Forest, which I is nice. I can't wolf whistle it though because it's non -drive. Well, why didn't you save it for this next one, which is Dan's Orbea Rose Alloy out in Massachusetts, USA? Wow. There's an upgrade. There's an upgrade to a 170 mil Fox Factory 38 fork on. Wow. So Big. That, that's interesting, isn't it? Go on with the coil on the back as well. And Alloy, do you know what? This is a whole. No I mean, we're not even going to get Yeah, I know I he's going to say form of a function. Yeah, we no, go. well, no, because Orbea do it so well that their alloy bikes, the way that they do their welds and stuff, look carbon. You like, you wouldn't look. You can't see a weld. It looks amazing. I think. I like alloy bikes anyway, regardless of welds. Well, I'm not saying I didn't like. You kind of were, Rich, weren't you? You kind of were. Honestly, leave it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> very Chris nice. Marita, That's right. E140. Right, well, oh, we're on. Okay. We're on another Marita. Yes, E140 from. Uh, Queensland, Australia. Queensland. Can Mount my Canagan. Mount Canagan. <laughs> the climb that nearly killed me. I tell you what, this is a show that nearly killed me. That's the end of this <laughs> week. <laughs> this is the end of this week's bike ball. Well, thanks for watching. Oh, look, Merry uh, Christmas, everyone. Merry yeah, Christmas. I hope you have a wicked one. Yeah. Uh, and I'm off to get my deck, or as Richard's off to get the Beef and, Wellington. Oh, yes, please. I'm just out of here, really. No, I'm only kidding. It's been well fun, Rod. Merry Christmas, everyone. We'll see you next time. See you later. See you later bye.